Chapter 5 Error Nodes, Error Terms I walked out of the tube station, leaving the subterranean labyrinth of screeching noise and incessant inane announcements far behind. I walked out into the dark winter's night's air, engulfing me in a bracing chill, awaking me from my journey, induced stupor which had seduced each passenger into a meditative state as they sat within the tube carriages, trying to blocking out the noise and uncomfortable close proximity of each other. Each node, forced to endure a lack of privacy during their journeys to and from work on the tube. A shortcut through an alleyway, then a stroll along the garden allotments, which most endogenous nodes used who wanted to break free of the utopian state's concrete infrastructure for a brief moment, to reside amongst the seemingly chaotic, pseudo-random, pseudo-nature of the utopian state's garden allotments. Some allotment renters probably fantasized that they were living off-grid, yet never did. They spent a few free hours a week, scratching around on their rented soil, their little allotment of nature. I made my way into the park, a more unbiased model of nature, yet not quite completely random or free. It was a treat, though, to be away from the relative chaotic hustle and bustle of primary sample spaces city centre. I breathed in a few large mouthfuls of crisp evening air that seemed to soothe and invigorated my lungs, body and mind. The birds chirped high upon bare winter trees which collectively stood tall and regal, yet individually they looked hauntingly alone and leafless. The barren trees seemed to be the incarnation of partial derivatives within an unfathomably large collection of total partial derivatives as they all randomly scratched and probed the dark night sky with respect to time, a time weighted with a seemingly near-infinite coefficient. I was about to regress temporarily yet fully into a meditative stroll as I traversed through the near-random hinterland of the park, indulging in a pseudo-freedom from primary sample space and its continual statistical aggregating of every node's actions and interactions. Suddenly a figure loomed out from behind a clump of bushes. As the silhouette approached, I made out that it resembles an unbiased node. This unbiased youth looked tough. I noted by the way the figure carried itself in a deliberate, ignorant, ostentatious manner. Trying to exhibit self-importance through its ignorant, menacing, over-exaggerated body language coupled with irrationally positioned attire, which hung from the silhouette in every irrational position. You got change, yeah? demanded an unbiased node arrogantly. His malicious beady eyes beamed a glimmer of joy. His face held an enigmatic smirk, subtly reveling in the situation, where momentarily he would be in charge of another node's fate. He would most probably show no mercy. I read the situation. The thug would launch a full-scale attack upon me, a perceived, simple, harmless node. He was hoping perhaps to permanently injure me, then rob me of my possessions. It would be a bit of fun for this thug. He knew his rights. If arrested, he would probably be placed under the dummy. Node. Special Dispensation Act. Even when committing a senselessly violent crime. His excuse would be that he came from a poor family, which although received generous welfare benefits due to the Dummy Node Special Dispensation Act, and lived better than most working-class Delta Node families. He would plead that he was forced to commit this violent act out of cumulative discriminatory bias that had been accruing against his sample subcast for generations. The thug may be ignorant, but not ignorant of the basic law of the state which he had learnt when probably being arrested many times before. The thug would be shrewd 
in dealing with any arrest. The thug was wise enough to follow me to this quiet park before initiating his attack. No, I am sorry, I replied, smiling, trying to hide my fear. I had read about the many horrific violent muggings in primary sample space that the state deliberately turned a blind eye to. In doing so, helped to perpetuate. Then the thug launched his attack. I tried to make use of some martial arts training I had once received. I was able to evade it most of the punches. But eventually the thug's natural fighting instinct kicked in. I instinctively grabbed his sleeve, holding onto his arm, and began swing randomly at his face. For all of my training, I was no match for the young, tough, athletic, malicious thug. I slowly succumbed to the relentless onslaught. As the punches rained down on me, the pain built up, then faded as numbness and disorientation seeped over my head. I thought of the irony of these dummy nodes, which always played the victim, but when they have the upper hand, momentarily, they show no mercy. Carrying out gratuitous savagery without remorse, yet they expect to be treated with kid gloves and special exceptions given to them by the state. Just when all hope seemed lost, suddenly the beating stopped. Through the melee of distorted grey silhouettes that my brain desperately tried to analyse as post-concussion set in my swelling brain. I could see a silhouette, a pair of arms, then another pair. Whose were they? I lay there, trying to regain a semblance of my former consciousness, dealing with the pain and disorientation. As the silhouettes started to increase in resolution into recognisable figures and objects of my past comprehension of reality, I could see a group of dishevelled vagrants standing around me. They seemed to look concerned. One was pumping my legs backwards and forwards, trying to pump air into my diaphragm. The vagrants were the lost nodes that did not fit into the great regression model of the state, categorized as errors nodes. I had hardly given the error nodes these embarrassing irritants, unimportant to the endogenous nodes and variables of the great regression model. Those irritants, that, were usually normalized away to a value of zero. When errors terms were realised, producing an R-squared value below 60%, embarrassing any Ministry of Inference's beta node who had set and inferred their specific failed regression model. I had never given the error nodes a moment's thought before, but now they were my saviours. At this very moment, relative to my perspective, they were the most important nodes within the utopian state and they were not even sigma cast, endogenous or alpha nodes. Through a weather-beaten face, one binary error node wore an expression of empathy as she applied a cold soda bottle against my swelling face. Another error node, who had a large rough appearance, was sitting astride the now unconscious, badly beaten thug. At that moment I felt guilty. I like most endogenous sigma nodes, had always looked down upon the errors, the unwanted nodes, the residuals of the great societal model. Some errors may have been escaped redundant nodes, who for some reason did not board the Arcadian Express, or had escaped as aware outliers, yet most were just the error terms within the model, or even the statistically significant who fell outside the confidence interval, but did not threaten the Economic Efficiency Act. My entire recollection was that the errors were conveniently discriminated against and discarded by the utopian state, which no longer cared about the errors nodes, the hidden animate variables. 
These error node variables were hidden from the model, yet were always included and calculated by the sample data. Their existence no mystery to the utopian state, yet a conveniently hidden random homocedastic, normalized sigma variance that was weighted by an error correction, covariance matrix. This matrix was filled with scavenging utility probability values that kept the error terms perpetually scavenging for marginalized, constrained, discarded refuge and reliant on spontaneous acts of illegal altruistic donations from passing nodes. The error terms were allowed to manifest, their random movements within the utopian state's great regression model, yet they were kept predictable with a series of time intervals by restricting them into a conditioned, normalized, homocedastic, time series range that was accepted by the state. Relative to the state's regression model, the error nodes were hidden error terms only becoming incarnate within the realized sample data once inferred as residual variables, which was deemed officially acceptable. As long as the independent residual aggregate demand quota variable influenced the targeted dependent variable with a high R-squared value, then the normalized homocedastic error terms were tolerated as an unavoidable part of a healthy regression model function. The only uncertainty within the great regression model a sort of quantum fluctuation within the great financial economic mechanics of the great utopian state, which was built upon the Economic Efficiency Act and its financially engineered certainty. Yet this uncertainty was managed within the very model by the Ministry of Inferences with the use of the Markov normalized constants. But now they were attending to my welfare, an endogenous sigma cast node, it seemed irrational, the birth of some new irrational term or situation. A quantum imaginary number popping out to the unconditional probability ether to merge with a real number value. Me or this situation. Creating a complex number becoming real and realized with a complex conjugate to form a new unpredictable unimagined future perhaps. I was helped to my feet by a biased error, his face hidden almost by a long dark hood and beard, a face to be expected of the unknowable fleeting stochastic error node essence only realized when they become a residual term still hidden within the normalized aggregate value of zero. Yet I somehow instinctively knew this unknowable error node was called a nova. Their fate, even though individually free, was even more mundane and devoid of existence as their engineered mean would always be impotent, devoid of influence, set to zero. At least the constrained endogenous sigma nodes had a positive value expected mean which gave us some weighting, some importance, some existence within the utopian state's great regression model. I mumbled softly, thank you as my mouth was in pain from the many chaotic blows received from the thug. I struggled to concentrate whilst trying to deal with the emanating pain. Every few moments my eyes kept darting anxiously towards the unconscious thug whom my brain still deeming as a potential threat. The biased errors noted my fear. Don't worry about him again. He will not harm anyone again, said Anova as the other errors laughed. What do you mean? I asked drowsily. Then Anova's eyes peered past his thick beard, which permanently hid his true essence and presence. His eyes darted back and forth, issuing a silent command to the large, burly, rough-looking error node. I again instinctively knew he was called Mu who was sitting astride the fallen thug. Anova nodded his head, which was obscured by his hood and thick beard. Then the burly Mu flicked open the partially obscured object which he was holding. 
I rubbed my eyes, trying to reduce my distorted vision. The object flicked into a long switchblade. The burly moo smirked sarcastically at me, then at the bearded Anova. The other errors all stood around silent, anticipating the next event with relish. Moo, as if ritualistically, removed his long, dirty tramp jacket, revealing his physique, composed with powerful muscle. This fact caught my attention not so much because an error usually had a poor diet, but because of the many tattoos that cover his body. Moo must have been a convict, I thought, as tattoos were illegal. Apart from the state and advertising corporation board, sanctioned tattoos. The burly, tattooed Moo pulled back the unconscious thug's trouser leg, then ripped off one shoe. Aggressively with one swipe, he cut through the thug's Achilles tendon. The pain surged through the thug's unconscious body, so much so that it awoken him from his violently induced slumber. As the thug started to awake to the pain, the other errors smirked, whilst the tattooed convict raised his arms, standing over the thug, with his boot on the thug's body, as if he was posing for a big game hunting photograph. As the commotion of the active errors started to subside to a realised, random, homocedastic, normalised routine, a gathering of endogenous sigma-cast nodes appeared and started to observe these residual node with perplexed inference as to the nature of these errors. Residuals, animate nodes, who lived within the model, yet were outside of the normalised sigma cast, outside of the regulated regression model of endogenous sigma nodes and of the independent and dependent variables. These bearded vagrants, hidden outcasts, barely tolerated with the utopian state's great regression model, yet my personal irrational saviours of this day, were truly error terms incarnate. The sigma nodes approached, looking to observe and infer, the unexpected, realised incident of the wounded thug lying in the park. An event that was far outside of their confidence intervals, expected routines for the day. The errors sensing the attention, observations and inferences from the sigma nodes started to merge back within their hidden statistical ether, within the foliage and leafy obscured hinterland of the park periphery out of view of the prying eyes of the inferring nodes, perplexed at the strange, unusual realisation that the sample model of this situation had produced. A screaming, bleeding, solitary thug, lying in the park path, pleading innocence and expected victimhood. I stood in shock at the extreme level of violence I had just witnessed and experienced for the first time I had never witnessed firsthand, even though I had overseen statistics which related to hundreds of thousands of outlier nodes being sent to Arcadia. The sigma began to form larger pools of gawking crowds, yet all keeping a discreet distance from the crime scene. The thug began to scream in agony as he tried instinctively to get up and attack me again as I stood in shock. But the thug's ankle nearly broke as his tendon tried to hold his body weight, snapping more as they tried to move. The thug, a dummy variable node, yet still part of the official endogenous sigma node regression model society, fell to the fall, screaming in agony, not fully realising what was happening. One minute he was stalking his prey, creating his predictions on the event as it unfolded. A form of selection bias. He was self-prophesying with an unproven prior. The next minute he was beating his prey with effortless ease, as if collecting data from a model, confident the independent variable, I the prey, would succumb to the dependent variable himself. Yet the next minute he was battered into unconsciousness, waking up in searing pain. 
If he was educated, perhaps he would have considered the realization that his selection, bias, had become tainted by the hidden effect of the error terms incarnation within the sample data of that particular situation. The error nodes had become realized residual terms that were only known when actually realized. When the sample data was realized and the residual terms appear, to the detriment of many an observing statistical analyst thwarted by a low R-squared and the collection of distribute lagged variable engineered to thwart auto-correlations. I decided, in that chaotic, unpredictable, surreal, even irrational moment, the moment an error term transformed into a residual realized term in that moment of sheer confusion and panic, yet perhaps a moment of pure, stochastic, unbiased clarity. In an instant I ran after the mysterious outcast error nodes to follow them back into their murky, statically hinterland within the great regression model, yet within the unknown, statistically significant ether, incarnate within the Parks foliage. I would immerse myself with the unknown, hidden, different yet conjoined ethereal error nodes, far off the normalized confidence interval of expected routines of a beta endogenous sigma node that represented the Ministry of Inferences. I had seen a new character of node that resided within the great utopian statistical society, even though on the very margins animalistic and violent, where there was perhaps no right or wrong, just the most savage was righteous. State utopian was no different. It just hid its barbarity within the tunnels and catacombs beneath the sprawling conurbation of primary sample space upon the Arcadian Express, and on some far-flung battlefield on the border of the Null Hypothesis. As I unpredictably and uncharacteristically ran off towards the errors, in so doing, I had most certainly jeopardized my career and life. I was acting now as an unpredictable outlier. I was exhibiting three standard deviations of statically significant behavior, unacceptable for a node, let alone a Ministry of Inference's beta node. I ran after the errors that had seemingly ran off toward the top of a small grassy hill flanked by countless small trees. They stood there on the periphery, their hoods up, their beards and scarf covering most of their faces. They were only identifiable by their dress and their physiques. Anova watched me as I ran towards them. The other errors kept an eye on the endogenous Sigma, who were gazing from far away, becoming more disinterested with the errors with each passing moment. What do you seek? asked Anova as I drew near. He had a defensive, hostile look in his eyes, peering through the hidden, bearded foliage of his face and hooded head, flanked by countless wrinkles and weather-beaten skin. Perhaps they could easily turn upon me, I speculated, as I slowed with trepidation whilst I approached the ethereal, unknowable error nodes. Maybe they would melt and merge away into the foliage as I, an observer, approached. But they did not. Maybe because I was like them now, I had committed to leaving the endogenous Sigma cast back in the park, and now momentarily I was with them, perhaps the ethereal error term, lurking somewhere hidden within the model, only to be realized into a residual term when the sample data being inferred. I was still in shock and not offended by their hostile innuendo and expressions. I mumbled, thank you again. May I ask, how can I help you? The other errors all looked at each other in shock. Help us laughed Anova. We are vagrants, outliers, error, nodes, hated, cast out and intangible, hated by all the Sigma, and by you, I am sure. I am sorry for my past perceptions of you and by my fellow endogenous Sigma nodes, I said, acknowledging the statement. 
The moment of honesty touched the error's nodes. You are sorry, repeated Anova, trying to mimic my expression and tone, trying to feel what perhaps what I was truly feeling. The burly, tattooed Moo stood smirking at me with half-crazed eyes, yet rationally enjoying the fact that one of the respectable, endogenous Sigma nodes were acting uncharacteristically, fraternizing with the unknowable, hidden errors. A binary error implored with the group. Can't you see? He's in shock. We need to look after him. The group of errors paused, not knowing what to do. I suppose I could never repay you, but you are very necessary to the great statistical model, I know. The Sigma are not aware of your importance, but the utopian state is. I said truthfully, yet meekly, still in shock. There was a long pause. Then Anova replied, How do you know that? Who are you? Another error approached me and put his hand in my jacket. He took out a wallet and riffled through it. He looked at my ID card. The errors then looked at Anova, saying, Look, he works for the Ministry of Inferences. At that moment, Mu strode towards me and flicked his knife near my throat. I stood there, keeping my calm, yet still in shock. Perhaps the errors thought I was exhibiting courage. Anova said, No, wait. Burly, tattooed Moo glared at me momentarily, then folded his knife and walked away. You could repay us, said Anova. How? I asked, eager to repay the group for stopping the attack. We have an unbiased binary. She needs a medical prescription, but we cannot access it. We are errors. We steal and scavenge feeding from society's covariance matrix to survive, but even then, Without proper identity chips, we cannot buy the medicine. You could purchase the medicine? We will even give you some credits if you need, asked Anova. No, I will pay for it, but I need an excuse to buy medicine. I will say that I was attacked and hurt in this park, I replied. It will be difficult if she has a heart problem. How will you get her specific medicine? asked Anova. I will have to switch medicines, I replied. She needs to be on the state's database, like all the endogenous nodes that get their medicine. I will try to procure the medicine by tomorrow for her, and possibly amend the medical database so she may receive intermittent prescriptions to successfully treat her, I said. We would appreciate it if you could achieve that replied Anova. You are now an honorary error, announced the burly tattooed Moo, flashing an elusive smile. I paused, then said with reverence, I will endeavour most earnestly to procure the required medicine. I sounded as if I was accepting an official award into the honorary error status, but I was still in a certain degree of shock. With that, the group led me to the edge of the park. We presume a chaotic process will guide you throughout your new stochastic routines by helping us and therefore defying the non-stochastic normalized utopian state after your immediate departure now. But ultimately we expect to witness you at Theses' coordinates tomorrow, said Anova. I am quietly confident that will be realized, I replied. As I was leaving, I heard one error whisper say, The endogenous always say they will be back, but never do. He won't return once the shock wears off. This made me more determined to return and repay the errors. As I made my way out of the park, slowly, methodically emerging, out of the hidden foliage of the murky statistical ether, where the realized, observed, residual terms hide, residing as unobserved error nodes, deep within the linear regression model of the state and of this statistical reality. I strangely felt that I'd been somehow touched by the error nodes' presence whilst interacting with them. 
I had somehow retained some of their residual term, intangible random essence within me. I had somehow become slightly an error term, myself. I felt more stochastic, less predictable and more elusive than before the attack. Maybe it was just the stress of the day, yet I felt myself retain some of the error's essence or subconscious mindset. Even though I was feeling more stochastic, more unpredictable, I realized that the error terms were controlled by the state's error correction model with its covariance matrix containing the scavenging utility variables. The error node's collective mean was normalized to be homocidastic, having a mean of zero as devised by a Ministry of Inferences econometric analyst Markov. The errors nodes become incarnate within the inferred model of the great sample liner regression model of the utopian state as residual terms. Then they are minus from the model, from the utopian state, as a normalized average of zeros through the Markov technique. Yet I was not an intangible, unobserved error node hiding within the murky statistical ether. I was not a realized, observed, residual term either. I was an endogenous sigma, a beta node of the Ministry of Inference. Yet now I strangely felt like I'd slightly become an exposed, realized, residual term of the fixed, unknown mean of state utopia's great regression model of the current, contemporaneous, realized, observed data of this observed reality. I felt like I was a realized, residual term that was now being continually presented to an observing state utopian model. My perceived very existence tainted by the residual term was observed and calculated into fruition within state utopia, incarnate with the model as a glaringly obvious residual term. My guilty perception grew with each footstep as I hastened almost burgundy back into the rigid, real, etherless state utopian society and infrastructure. Once again, as I was observed by more and more cameras, positioned high above on intermittent lamp posts, observed constantly by the state's sentient devices that littered the lane that border the quiet natural park, and its foliage that hid the murky statistical unknown within where the error terms nodes reside. But now, as one camera detected my presence as I approached the high street, I became a recognizable endogenous sigma node once again. But secretly, I felt slightly like a residual term who would be classified as a glaringly obvious residual term to the observing cameras as I would be observed emerging out of the murky foliage of the parks statistical hinterland. Yet I felt strangely slightly stochastic, more free, more unpredictable, more intangible and fleeting. Perhaps it was just my new mindset, altered slightly by this new extreme statistical event of being attacked in the park and momentarily regressed to a more primitive entity, whist, sheltered by the intangible error terms. I considered that the error nodes mix with the endogenous nodes, but they are separate, yet both contribute to create the utopian state's monthly regression model. The vagrant error terms are the white noise, the unaccounted for errors that the utopian state knows exist, yet turns a build eye to. It would be inefficient to try to eliminate them, more trouble that they are worth. The park, where the error terms lived, was a constrained region, a collection of partial derivatives, where one axis, their acceptance by society, was held constant as marginalized yet in every other axis, which their minds and lives inhabited, they reached full capacity. Maybe we all live in constrained existence. Maybe we all have partial axis and variables held constant, and yet we are not aware of it whether it is financial, social, or some other inhibition, naturally occurring, or a state-engineered function. 
As I made my way back to the Ministry, I realised that if I honoured this agreement, then I would officially become a subversive, issuing goods and medicine to the Errors nodes. Yet strangely enough, the slight residual term I felt within me made me feel that I somehow reside partly outside of the confidence interval now within the murky ether, within the unrealised of the not allowed tale. I now partly resided, realised within the statistically significant region of the utopian state model, yet the intangible statistical transgression past the expected official confidence interval Z value within the deep, not allowed tales of the normalised distribution. I felt the residual murky deviation of an error term, the murky ethereal statistical force with its intrinsic good spirit resonating somewhere within, magnifying my feelings of altruism and morals. I now felt even more of a conviction to help this unbiased binary who was considered far outside of the mode, yet ironically a part of the model, forever relegated to being nothing more than a fleeting realisation within the model, a residual term conveniently considered non-existent, yet existent, an error term waiting to be realised, to be observed and inferred yet she may expire before the chance to even be realised, to even be observed and inferred by the state, I felt more conviction to rescue this unbiased binary, perhaps a lagged, distributed, emotional variable deep within my psyche, still futilely trying to save Mrs. White, even though she was already rendered redundant. My statically significant intangible feelings perhaps bordering on irrational, like an imaginary number hovering above the real number line of the ridged, quantifiable, utopian society. My emotions imparting an almost extraterrestrial, inconceivable notions of altruism, morals, which superseded specific situations and expected outcomes of the utopian state. My emotions becoming correlated with the good spirit, all magnified by my new perception of partially residing within the murky ether of the intangible statistical realm of the stochastic error terms, and now perhaps at least subtly residing outside of the narrow spectrum of the confidence interval. My intention of trying to save this unbiased binary would mean I would be on my way to becoming a redundant node instead of an alpha. I could just choose to forget the errors and return to my career. I then soon would be an alpha, as I helped catch Pareidolia. Pareidolia, that false weasel. I have no guilt in my part catching him. But the unbiased binary error. What had she done? And harmless Mrs. White eliminated for nothing. Thousands of nodes falling outside of the confidence interval every week who were mostly innocent. No, I would honour my commitment with the errors just this once. Then I would accept my alphaship, or methodically plan a way out of the utopian state. I made my way back to the Ministry of Inferences on the seventh floor. You are late. Where have you been? The quotas are piling up. This will go down on your attendance record. It will affect your e-graph rating, said Blue smugly. I was attacked in the park, I replied. Blue's face dropped with frustration that I had a statistically significant excuse to use against my slight statistical indiscretion. I knew it was true. I took a delight in frustrating Blue, that nasty piece of work. I continued... I need to freshen up. As I pushed past him, delaying my work duties further to his annoyance, Blue replied with a frustration edged on his face, I need your report by the end of the day to stop the lateness report being logged against you. No way, cried out Bernoulli. Bayes was attacked in the park, relishing in the excitement, 
escaping his mundane office routine. Soon many co-workers had surrounded me, demanding that I tell of the attack. Again and again until it had morphed into an epic tale. I left out the part of the story containing the errors, as I did not want to seem as if I had fraternized with a banned caste, or that I intended to help them. I had transformed this official minor punctuality transgression into a positive merit. There would no longer be a negative comment placed against my workplace routines, rather, Yet another merit would be included in my monthly report. The other merit for helping apprehend pareidolia. Blue ground his teeth with jealousy. He was the supervisor. He should be the centre of attention, not me. I noted that Blue was sidelined out of my view by the gathering crowd of Beta Ministry Sigma. My expression was one of joy. Being a hero, revelling in the attention, it was rational. It was to be expected by the scanners. My excitable storytelling to the office workers correlated with my official narrative. My enjoyment and euphoria was now detected by the scanners. Yet I was happy to have deceived the system, thwarting blue, relief from not being caught fraternizing with the errors. I was safe. I was untouchable. I would soon have a double merit awarded in just one month, when most Beta Ministry Sigma never received a single merit their entire careers. I was on my way to being an Alpha. I knew it. They all knew it. So did Blue, who had now decided to back off. Maybe I would be his boss. Blue possibly reasoned. Yet he secretly hated me, and anything that he perceived usurped him. He despised the lower caste nodes below him and was jealous of any equal beta node bettering him. Only the higher caste did he respect. He worshipped them. That made him the perfect beta ministry sigma, a model node of state utopia, the perfect employee. I kept to my expected routines for the rest of the working day, bore the pushing and shoving in the overcrowded tube carriages, then closed the door to my subsided apartment. I tried to mask my feelings of guilt, letting down the errors by not returning this night, but I felt relieved at having a second chance. I might just continue to be a small, insignificant, integral part of the state and not rebel. Why put myself in harm's way in being a subversive? It was dangerous, therefore irrational. But the residual stochastic term resonated and stirred, magnify my intangible animal sprit within. I would honour my agreement with the error nodes and help the unbiased binary.